everyone, welcome back to the Adventures in Odyssey Oddcast. I'm Devin, a.k.a. Leonard Meltzner. And I'm Victoria. So, as you've noticed, we're not filming in the way that we usually are. Things are a little bit different this time around, but more importantly, first off, this is the episode that we've been waiting for for a very long time because... It is our interview with Austin and Tasha. Yes. And I have, like, the clicky bar where it makes the sound effects, and I'll have that. So, <sighs> yeah. Yes, it's very exciting. We finally got to interview them and ask them a whole bunch of probing questions, and we will get to that in just a minute. And yes, indeed, the time bar is quite long. We talked to them for a while, so hopefully you enjoy hearing the things that they have to say, since this is the first time that they've been interviewed concerning the blog and the podcast. So like I said earlier, our filming here is a little different this time around. We're being filmed on a webcam, and so is the uh, interview. But the reason that is, is because, once again, we are not in Castlegar. This time we are in Vancouver. We are not, in fact, at Box 9800 Vancouver BC V6B 4G3. But we get to that later in the episode. And I will try and find it while I'm here over the next three years. Because I'm now living in Vancouver, going to school at UBC. And Victoria will be back in Castlegar. This is very sad. Yeah. We'll miss each other a lot. And we will be doing our best to get episodes out to you guys over the interwebs back and forth. It will be difficult, but we have gotten our practice through the summer with these first six episodes, and so I'm looking forward to see what we're able to patch together electronically. And by I say we, I mean me, because I do all the editing stuff. Yeah. So there will be changes that would be brought through this, but hopefully will be good things and move forward into the future. So one thing to look forward to is shortly after this episode is released, there's going to be a special episode. Secret that, bonus episode. And yes, that is not a secret because we're saying it right now, but it is bonus. And the fact that 99% of you who watch this will have watched it by the time that it's already come out, so... But yeah, stay tuned at the end of this VHS tape for a special music video. or Even though whatever. it's technically episode 7 that yeah, we're talking about. It's kind of bonus because it's coming so much on the heels, but it'll finally catch our schedule up to back where it was supposed to be originally. And it has to do with Austin and Tasha. So. Yeah, so it's, it's relevant. So we're going to turn you over to the interview now, and we will see you when it's done. Bye, guys! Hey everyone, we're back here now with Austin and Tasha Peachy, the founders of the Adventures in Odyssey blog and the Adventures in Odyssey blog cast. Welcome you guys, thank you for joining us here today. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thanks. Anything to say, Victoria? This feels really weird because you're always talking to us and now we're interviewing you and... Yeah, and that's the same thing I say to Tasha every time we interview someone. Like, come on, Tasha, you got to say something next. So, yeah, you guys are um, really copying us. <laughs> yeah, obviously that's it. Okay, so I guess we'll dive right into things. Thank you for everyone that sent questions into us. It wasn't all that terribly many people, but we really appreciate those who ask questions. So to start things off, how did you two first hear Odyssey? Well, um, I don't have a definite memory. I believe I was about four or five, and um, we're still living here in New Mexico before we moved to West Virginia, but I believe I heard Odyssey on the radio. I think it was from album 27, The Search for Wit. It might have been a question about Tasha. For some reason, I have this really faint memory about it. I don't know if yeah, I don't think to start on. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Tasha was born by then, but I believe yeah, that was my first time. Yeah, I would have been born. Yeah. All right. It's your turn, Tasha. I think it had something to do with me laying in the crib and he comes into the room with a tape player. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think our our parents um had listened to it too, and when we moved to West Virginia, I have sort of blanks. I sort of blank on what happened, but I know we listened to it on the radio. I'm not sure when, but a lot of people that we went to school with and um, some of our family as well listened to Odyssey, Odyssey. So we sort of grew up around it and with other people liking it too. So 
we've been listening ever since. All right, Austin, who is your favorite character? Um, it's Are not. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Other you Tasha. Quite the character, Forbes. but. Yeah, Tasha Forbes is a good character, but um, she's not my favorite. No offense to <laughs> you or the actress. Um. That's almost as hard as saying what's my favorite episode, but I Sorry. narrow it down. To... Oh, did Victoria thought I was going to say that, huh? No, oh, that's the next question. You have to wait. Yeah, you can't read oh, okay. that. All right, I won't say anything about that yet. But um, Mr. Whitaker and Connie and Eugene actually are my favorite character. I believe my number one would probably have to be Jack Allen. At least an adult. I really, I, Wooten used to be my favorite character before the hiatus, but now he's about number two in adult characters for me. But my favorite kid character is and will always be Jared. Yes! Yeah! Me too! Yeah! Air five. Yeah! Um, Alright, and Tasha, favorite episode. Oh, okay. does she get to tell you what her favorite character is? Well, I, I'm just I'm just switching the order up between things to keep it spicy. Oh, okay. Tasha, what's your favorite episode? <laughs> oh my, I have no idea at all. That's like picking a favorite child. Like that is so day, cliche. You know? Everyone uses. That. Well, I hope you don't have as many children oh, as there are on the episodes. No, I don't know. I I can't name one. Okay, yes you can. You like Aloha Oil a lot. That's a three-parter. Does that count? Yeah, that does yeah. count collectively. Okay, okay. And you like the Green Ninja Conspiracy a lot. Quick, give me ideas, Austin. Please, well, quick. Well, I have to help you, Alec, here. I don't want you to sound too off. Yeah, you're helping a lot. <laughs> All right, Austin, favorite episode. Uh, I thought it was character <laughs> episode and the character episode. I didn't episode. really give an answer, so you have yeah, to. Yeah, that's what you thought. That's the point. We're switching things up. We're in Yeah, you really are. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, favorite episode, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, sort of like what I said, Aloha always from my favorite comedy episode. Um, I really like Back to Bethlehem quite a bit. Um, the Underground Railroad, the Jubilee Singers. Um, Pretty That's Little more Wild. than one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know. And there's, but really, a lot of my favorites are three-parters, probably because there's the story and like the humor and all the characters are developed so much. I don't there's think there's ever been a three-parter that I don't love. Exactly. Yeah. I know a lot of people didn't like The Other Side of the Glass, but that's one of my favorites, too. Oh, I really oh. like that one. What I should have said was, um... No, I can't think of it. But you oh didn't. My. It was the four-parter recently. Oh, my. Um, Sergeant I can't, York? Oh my. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I do yeah, like I that one, but it's not my favorite. But I guess it it's my favorite four-parter, if you don't count the Novacom... Uh, Plan B. But I, I never count that as a four-parter, because, you know, all of them are so connected to all the other ones. It's okay. more like a 40-parter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tasha, what is your favorite, or who is your favorite character? Or favorite what, character. depending on how loosely you define character. Yeah. <laughs> same, same as his, it'd probably be Jared. And Jack? Yeah, no, not Jared! Jack, maybe. Oh. I don't know. Well, I, 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 I split it down to categories. Well, I, I'm not very, what's the word? Very talented with categories. My brain's gone today. Um, Decisive. It, it goes and comes. It comes and goes. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's okay. probably your favorite. So, when has something you learned on Odyssey helped you in real life? Uh, who's supposed to answer you. first? Yeah. Both. Both. At the same time. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two. Oh, no. I really don't. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I told this story uh, when we interviewed David Griffin, and it's the one that sticks out to me the most because I think for pretty much everyone, like, you know, the little history bits and science stuff does help you in school a lot. But yes. for me, um, the episode... Oh, I'm drawing a blank now. It's, a, it's an album for... Um, and Whit, uh, Connie and Jean try to be like Wit. Um, I should oh, Let This Mind Be In You. Yes, Let This Mind Be In You. Um, it's kind of strange because uh, I I think I believe I heard the episode for the first time when we were in school in West Virginia. Um, we stayed over um, a little after school at a friend's house, and they had that episode on a cassette. Hope you guys know what those are. 
Sure yes. The audience too. If you yes. don't, you had a very sad childhood. They're, they're these little rectangular things, you know. They have yeah, they're not circles. eight track tapes. They're actual, you know, they're smaller and look really cool and retro. Really yeah. Okay, we're really rambling <laughs> here. Um, but anyway, it was that episode, and in that episode, you know, Jimmy um, got in trouble at school, but he wasn't sure if he should tell his parents. And you know, Connie tells him, no. You, if you only got in trouble in school, you shouldn't have to tell your parents. And he gets in trouble for it when his dad finds out, and Connie gets in trouble. And that's sort of replied to me because that very day I did something at school. Like, I I'm not I wasn't really mischievous. I wasn't really that bad of a kid, but I did get in trouble a couple times, and I did at that. school. <laughs> uh, and um, I got in trouble that day at school, and my teacher knew about it and had corrected me for it. And my dad, um, he was a principal, but I don't think he was there that day or something. But um, I wasn't quite sure, should I tell my parents? Like, I don't really want to tell them. But when I heard that episode, it was like, whoa. Like, it really convicted me. Like, uh, I don't want to get in trouble like Jimmy, so I better tell him. So that day I did, and um, I apologized. And that is the one time that Odyssey has really impacted my life in a really big significant way that you can actually see. That's a good example. Yep. <laughs> Tasha, you have to live up to that now. <laughs> I, I can't. Know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't remember very much of when Odyssey would have helped me that much. I mean, I know a lot of the stuff, a lot of the lessons that they've learned has applied to me before, but I can't think of one off my head right now. Yeah. It, it probably, um, when we all have kids someday, then our kids will probably replicate something, and that will happen, but it won't really happen with us. And that's something with Odyssey that we can sh show them, and that will probably happen. All right, can you think of, like, any one little tiny <laughs> random thing at all, or just... just Not nothing? at all. Oh, that's, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're okay, Tasha. You missed it, you missed it. Oh. I said okay, you're not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the funniest thing that a non-fan has said to you about being a fan? Oh, boy. Um, well, out here there's really not anybody else that have our big fans like us. Like, um, the kids that we went to school with, like, when they stay over at our house or stayed after school or something like that, we would play Odyssey episodes, some funny ones or some big action ones to get them, you know, really interested in it. And I they're I wouldn't say even a casual fan because um you know, a lot of kids today don't listen to radio dramas, which is sad. But I don't know. They I don't think somebody's ever explicitly said something, but I think they're a little they think we're a little crazy, maybe. That's <laughs> being a little too harsh, but I think they may think that we're a little too obsessed with it, but really, when you think about how obsessed some people are about, you know, Star Trek or Star Wars, something like that, we're we're actually pretty normal, and there's actually a lot to get excited about with Odyssey, and it has a lot more redeeming messages than a lot of entertainment. So I, I think it's not anything everybody's any said to us. No, I mean, you know, the example that someone had was, you know, oh, I used to watch that show when I was a kid. Like, you ha you you got the wrong side of Odyssey. Yeah, but, I get that all the time from people. Yeah, yeah it's not a good sign of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they say the word watch, you're like... Yeah, it, uh, but I guess it could mean they watch the official podcast, the video podcast they did, but that's probably not the case. No. I found a... Um, I said that I mentioned Odyssey to someone at our church, and then they said, oh, my nieces and nephews, they watch Odyssey, I'm like, you mean listen? And they're like, no, they watch the t movies. I'm like, ah. Yeah, they don't close their eyes when they do that. They don't just close their eyes and listen. Actually, sometimes being some, of, some of the Odyssey videos will be better if you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> or just like, Matt, just close your eyes and then close your ears and then and just listen. listen. Odyssey, and then, yeah. actual Odyssey episode while you're watching it. Yeah. Like, or while you're not watching them, since you said you had your eyes closed. Yeah. Okay. I'll get what you said there. Uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll figure it out once I rewatch this video. Okay, proceed. This is a really cool question. I really like this one, Victoria. 
Okay, this is probably one of the funnest ones on the list. So for both of you, we'll probably start with Tasha since Austin answered the last one. If you could write your own episode, who would be in it, what would happen, and who would direct it? Hmm. I know, we could have Emily Jones in it and several other people that he doesn't like. And, you know, like, have them go. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I wasn't looking at you. Anyhow. I didn't say Ivy. I just. <laughs> That's not enough. Anyhow, um, they could all gang up on Austin. And, hey, you know, hey, <laughs> there's only one character in Odyssey named Austin, which he was a really cool kid. I, I wish they would have had him in more episodes. For the one but episode. No. <laughs> yeah. Popsicle kid. Austin O'Connor. But mm. honestly, I'd probably have the older characters. Like with Connie and Jean and, and all Jack of them, and Jason. yeah, and just have something just like Old Odyssey instead of all the and new like stuff slice of life or like a mystery, mm -hmm. big mystery or something. Would Not anyone die? Like. <laughs> yeah, and who would direct it? Who direct it? Oh my! Hmm. First name comes to my mind is Nathan Huber. We'll just say he can direct it. <laughs> okay. Okay, my turn. Um, um, I don't know. It seems it may seem a little weird that I'm obsessed with this and Tasha isn't, but Richard Maxwell should come back, and if I could write an episode, he would be in it in a multi-parter or like a long story arc. But I would have him maybe. I don't know. I can't think of how they would do it because. In the Green Room Conspiracy, they set it up so well that he could have been, like, the person that could bring the crash. Or even the stiletto. So, um, I'm, I'm sure if you they are... Richard, Richard was the stiletto? Yeah, I could take Richard over Jason. No, because Richard became a good guy, remember? Yeah, but Jason was a good guy, too. He could have been working for the government. Yeah, but it's better because Monty was working for him the whole time, and he didn't realize that it was his own uncle. Sure. Yeah. But I, I think they probably could have it where they just bump into him, sort of like they did in Willy in the Windy City. Well, they dropped in on him. But um, they could probably, like something overseas, not London, but maybe like France or Italy, um, or even, uh, oh, I don't know, Washington, D.C. or something. And, of course, if you had Richard Maxwell in an episode, um, it had to be some kind of intrigue in it. And, have to have Glossman. Well, maybe. But and things, some kind yeah, of... Convoluted way to bring Blackard back from the dead, like the master. Like yeah, for like nine know, time. I mean, if you brought Richard Max, you could eat, you'd mention Blackard or like sort of hint at it. But if you added Philip Glossman with it too, it would sort of seem like a build up for Blackard. I think it'd be a lot better if it just had Richard in it. Yeah, and I was gonna it say wouldn't, there. It wouldn't lead lead people to believe, believe something that was gonna happen that didn't. But what would happen? Yeah, it probably have Jack and Jason and Wit and Connie. And ooh, ooh. It would be like the perfect lead-up to a saga that makes my head canon. canon. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. Stop <laughs> talking. <laughs> Ignore but, him. Um, I would, who would direct it? Um, probably Paul McCusker. And even though the question was, like, if I could write it, which I, I probably couldn't write an episode like that, I would give the full reign to Paul McCusker because he's written a lot of that kind of stuff, and I, I really trust him to both write and direct it the really best it can be. I think that's a good idea. I want Richard to come back. I know. We should. I know they sort of petitioned it before, but some of your, um, I guess the Mitch fans drowned Richard out. Aww. Oh, no. Mitch fans. <laughs> Mitch. Okay, we better move on. We don't want to get too many yeah. upset here, which I think we'll probably will later. At least Tasha yeah. will, but move on, please. <laughs> Okay. All right, what made you two decide to start the Adventures in Odyssey blog and, by extension, the podcast, both? Well, it sounds kind of egotistical, but Tasha had nothing to do with it. <laughs> uh, the blog. Oh, the blog, I did. The blog, at least. Um, pretty much, I thought about the idea. It was really, I, yeah, it was back in 2008. It was around the time that the Album 58 stopped airing. The hiatus was starting. Yeah. And... It was before all the you know all the different fan blogs came up, and I mm -hmm. I don't believe the Odyssey Scoopid. Um, it sort of re I think it restarted somewhere around that time, or a little a little before, a little after. I'm not sure, but I only found like one actual blog, like on Blogger, and like someone had only posted like four times, and 
they just stopped and was really obscure. So I thought I would start one. I'd done a personal one for a while, and I like what I what went into blogging. So I thought it'd be really cool to do an Odyssey site because you know I love Odyssey and I've liked to like do stuff online with websites and such. So um, I thought, okay, what should it be called? And pretty much the easiest one was the Vintage Odyssey blog, which in hindsight, I sort of wish I could change it now because it has grown to so much more than just an actual blog. But I think it still sums up everything. But I, I looked it up, made sure that it was not taken. So I, I just used that. I start. I wrote a post, just news, and I around the same time I joined the town of Odyssey, so that was a great place to plug it. And I got a few visitors from there, and like some just searching the site. And once I did more. You know, some more creative stuff like the wallpapers and articles or um, whatnot. <laughs> Kaja hates that word. I had to use that. But, um, you didn't have to. Yes, I know. But uh, I just kind of snowballed from there, and I got contacted by Josh Shepard, who was the product manager for Odyssey back then, and he offered to like, send me some you know, exclusive stuff for, like, he, like he did for all the fan sites back then. So that was a big plus, and Eventually, um, later that, yeah, I believe it was um, later that year, about five, about three or four months afterwards, that I thought, hey, it'd be pretty cool to do a podcast, because by then we had listened to the official podcast quite a bit, and a few of the unofficial podcasts, and the ceiling fan came out, which really was a really big hit, and really started off this craze, make your own podcast, and... Well, I guess, yeah, the Winston co podcast came before Ceiling Fan in, in between the unofficial podcast. But it wasn't until the Ceiling Fan that really made everyone think, oh, I want to do something like this. And that's what we felt, too. Like, around the time I was tinkering around with some audio programs, it's like, I got some really cheap microphones, too, and those ear, ear pieces right here. I, I have it on my desk here, but it's in a box. I don't want to dig through it and, you know, mess up the mic and look at him and everything. But anyway, um... We had an idea. We wrote out a script. We sort of did it a variety type style. We had an introduction. We had a newscast. Then we had something like, um, was it Talk with Tasha or something like that? Uh, or, yeah, it was Nattery Nonsense with Natasha. Uh, that was it. Oh, yeah. That, I know yeah. why that didn't make it. Because it had <laughs> Natasha in it. Uh -huh. The word. I, I, I like that, that word. I like the word Nattery. That sounds really cool. It, it doesn't really sound what you think it would be. But we did that. Um, uh, we had a little, little bit of a rant. I think Tasha like talked about like you know, Ethan Daniel says he's the biggest fan, but I am, and um, some other stuff. And we recorded it, and we announced it on the Town of Odyssey. We said, "Oh, we had this podcast coming out soon," and we told them that we on the blog itself. We you. Yes, me. This technical. <laughs> anyway. Um, I did it, and I was about to export the whole thing, and around that time, I was getting my dad's computer, and um, I was combining our hard drives together, and when I switched it over to his computer, the program I used to edit the audio wouldn't work anymore. I couldn't install it, and so I still have the audio. I just didn't have any way to um, edit it. And so that was put on the back burner for a while. I was like, oh, it's not going to happen right now. I thought... Maybe sometime in the future, maybe just let it go. So after a while, um, I believe at Christmas, at Christmas around that time, my parents bought me um, Cape Walk Music Creator, which did much more than what the program I had. So I thought, hey, I have a way to do this, so maybe we can start it up again. And by then we had matured a little bit, and so I thought, huh, the stuff we have was really scripted. It's, it was really awful, too much like a ceiling fan. Um... And wait, wait, wait. You said it's too much like the ceiling fan, and you said all for it before it. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, e, well, okay, now you got to be confused again. Okay, um, Anyway, uh, we started up again. We thought, okay, we should do something that's, you know, well, it's not as copyright, not as time-consuming, and it wouldn't be as corny. So we thought, okay, we'll, redu we'll review stuff like the unofficial podcast. So we did Darian's Rise. We did a newscast. And we sort of have an idea of what we wanted to do. We wanted to interview some people. Actually, the first person that we wanted to interview was Jacob Eisman of the Odyssey Scoop, but that didn't work out, and the Ceiling Fan later did that. 
Um, actually, that's what's in the third episode. Uh, that didn't work out. But I, it really, we had some rough beginnings with it, and we got a pretty sizable good response from it. But um, it's a sort of snowball. After after you do something like this, I'm sure you guys will find find after a while that after a while you sort of get on the roll, you really feel comfortable with what you're doing, what you're capable of, and also what your listeners like. And once you get out there more, people hear hear you more, and like, I give you more feedback, you can really improve a lot of the stuff in your podcast. And that happened with us, I believe. And um, we had some really, really great times, and I'm really happy with what happened with it. Really long answer there, but I forget what the I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not much. I'm not much one for Twitter. In your guys' opinion, what is the coolest thing about Odyssey bands? Besides the fact that we are included among them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to have Tasha go first. Oh She's been testing me to answer this <laughs> first, so I'll, I'll oblige her. Um, I'd have to say that they feel, they, like if you talk to someone from the Odyssey fan community, you feel like your family. You don't feel like they're just some stranger from another part of the world. You feel like you have that bond of a family member. I like that part about it. Your turn, Austin. Yeah, sort of, sort of what she said, but I don't know. There's something, especially about the online community. I mean, listening to Odyssey and reacting to it is so much different than it was 10 to 15, 20 years ago um, when pretty much Odyssey wasn't as popular with, as it is now, and the only response you really give them was like actually in actual letters to focus and the few people that you might know that listen to you might discuss some things but it wasn't as interactive as it is now and with the internet you know you find people with the same interests and there's really a lot of conversation with it and especially for me um, with doing a ton of Odyssey and then different social networks and all of us doing the Vichyasi blog we got to talk to actual people from Odyssey and a lot of cool fans including you guys thank you <laughs> you're welcome and just like Tasha said, it it's really like a family and like your friends, even though you don't really know the people. Like I've met a lot of Odyssey fans that have really come close friends, even though I've never met them, and some I've never actually really spoken to with my voice. So it there's really something really special about that, and also the closeness and like how much how close we are to the characters. And like a lot of people, I feel like Odyssey has the best fans, and I really believe that because we're so invested in it. And also, I think also because of um, the message behind Odyssey, there's extra something that a lot of fans of other inter- forms of entertainment don't have, and it's it's really like a yeah, like Tasha said, a big family, but there's just so much more to it, and especially with the technology we have today, which is allowing us to do this, it's just really ama- amazing. There's there's nothing better than being an Odyssey fan. I don't know how people can't be one, or would want to be one. That's, those are good answers. <laughs> Alright. Thank you, we do our best. <laughs> Mine's shorter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So in five words or less, who should Connie marry, if anyone at all? Mm, you guys out of that five words or less than you. <laughs> No, your answer has to be five words or less. The question has nothing to do with it. Oh, yeah. you guys are mean. No, I want to see if you guys can do it. Well, Austin already okay. uses five words right there. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm done. Uh, Tasha? <laughs> mm. Come on, I, I, I got to stall. Tasha can go first. Okay, if not Mitch, then Jason. <laughs> All right, I'll accept that. I agree with that. <laughs> I, I don't agree with it, but it's better than Mitch. I think Jason's the best choice of anyone at all. What about you, Austin? He's counting on his fingers right now. I tried to think of five <laughs> words, and it's actually pretty hard. I'm getting to say a name. One more or one less. <laughs> say a name. Um. She said they said five or less. Yeah, so I know. It can be oh, less. okay. Um. But I feel about Connie getting married and who she's marrying. Not until Odyssey ends. If it ends, then there's no way she's gonna get married. No, I think 
I know. You know he means all she's never going to end, so she'll never get married. I accept <laughs> that answer completely. Golden <laughs> cigar for Austin if we in, if we endorse smoke. smoking, which we don't. Yeah. Know. We're just quoting Richard Maxwell. Yeah, I just okay. melt him down anyway. But really, I think some of the things that we want would want to happen. I think like some shows would do that, and I don't want Odyssey end, to end. I think it may go on until Jesus comes back, or it may end. I don't know, maybe financial things, or maybe they still they run out of stories. Oh, I'm, not this, I'm not you're wishing this. I'm not wishing this. But if they ever did in Odyssey, they could like do like a last album or like a special three or four part episode, and have. Some of the things that we would want to happen, like kind of getting married, or um, not Wooten and Penny getting married, no way. I'm mean, totally <laughs> against that. No. Or Blackard coming back. No, that kind of really cliche. But, Marrying oh. Connie. Blackard can marry Connie. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that no. was. No. Just jump the shark over the moon for the final album. <laughs> yeah, some shows do do yeah, that. Yeah, that's what the pilot is really about. <laughs> but um. Yeah, I don't really, because I know when I heard um, something, like, wow, Connie's getting married. I was, I don't remember my feelings so much, but I know like, I told my, t- told my mom, like, oh, I'm sure they won't do it for you guys. They don't change so much. And I, even though I felt kind of bad, I could sort of see that Emma was coming, even though I was sort of hoping to see if it happened. Well, yeah, but... But I really, in hindsight right now, I could see, I wouldn't have wanted her to get married. I, I can... I liked it. I sort of liked um, the dating period that you had with Mitch, but you can only have that go on so long, and you have to like say, are you are they really serious? Are they going to get married, break up, or just going to continue being friends? Which I think they could have kept Mitch on the show, um, at just friends or even dating for a while, and then like break up later, not have an actual wedding. But the way Mitch appeared was, you know, the Nupcom saga with like, some of the FBI and all that, which sort of put a uh, put a closure on his character and story. I wish. Then, in <laughs> one Spoilers. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure most people have heard it. They spoiled yeah. it for me, at least. But, um, really, I, I wouldn't want it to happen until the end, so there wouldn't be any really talk about it. And I really like how the official podcast did that kind of parody if Mitch and Connie got married. I was laughing so hard at it. Not because I thought, oh, this would be so awesome. I was crying and laughing so much. I'd be so that happy. I thought it was just so ridiculous, and I know even if it wasn't that extreme, it will be to an extent. So I think that since Eugene got to get married, Connie should have the same privilege. But some Don't people think, think that Eugene and Connie Eugene should have got married. Chicago, so Connie got to go to Chicago. So it should be the same thing with this, right? Well, some people believe that Connie should have got married. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a fictitious um, thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> This, sometimes I'm, so, I am really happy that us fans aren't writing the episode. We would really wreck Odyssey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we should hurry along. Yeah. If you met a family you'd never heard of Adventures in Odyssey, how would you convince them to try listening? Um, Tie them up and put a radio near them with a playlist that would play all episodes from albums 1 to 50. No, that's not fair. Yes. He has about the same exact thing as I was thinking. Of. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you have such, such a <laughs> such a cunning mind. But no, I wouldn't do that to anybody. I I would just pick some really good episodes that are really um part of any sagas or story arcs. Some of the best, like some from the early years and some from the more recent ones, like um. Like a game from Sergeant York. No, that not a game a from one. mystery. Um, yeah, Sergeant York. Even some historical stuff that really doesn't have Aussie. Emily the Genius. No, <laughs> but I think maybe one of the episodes I would use, I'll have to listen to, would probably be Groundhog Day. Maybe. I just said that uh, to make you happy. I love that episode so much. I still love that episode as much as I did when I first yeah, heard yeah, it. Yeah, we had even more fun reviewing it. But yeah, yeah I would just. I'll probably um, give them some MP3s of some of these stories, like hey, or send them to the website. Hey, just listen to these episodes. I, th- I think you enjoy. Like if they're on a car ride or something, I would maybe let them borrow some CDs or just let them listen online. And um, depending on the person, on also if they're a Christian family, um, it'd probably be easier to even listen to. But I guess even if it wasn't a Christian family, um, if it, you know, Odyssey is captivating, and we hear a lot of people 
but also atheists listen to Odyssey, and they enjoy it too. Usually. And I, yeah. But, yeah, I think the best way would just, I would do just choose some episodes I knew, I know, like, like stand out from the series and really have stood the test of time and some really great messages in it. I would give let the, them listen to that and draw their own conclusions. Tasha, anything to add? No. <laughs> I All think right. he says everything there is to say. So. No, she she still wants to tie them to chairs. I oh, do the same uh, thing, yeah. Tasha. <laughs> All right, can you guys attempt an entire conversation using only Odyssey quotes? Oh, I've been dreading this. When I saw this question, we started we started to do it, but we, I mean, we had like a we had like quotes and yeah we had like a minute in between each want. of the quotes. I mean, we can if something reminds us of it, we can quote an Odyssey episode pretty quickly. I'm sure it'd probably be easier for you guys. No, we but, did. We did a harder we, version of this. We actually once just started doing that, except we were only using like album titles. I, it was so hard. But we actually, actually did it. We went it. on for a couple minutes. <laughs> wow, that might be a slight exaggeration. Yeah, it uh, is, but yeah. Uh, well, it was album and episode titles, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want us to do it or have no, you excuse no, yourselves no. out of it? You could try it. something just, short. Just try. Just, just do something really short. Try. You have one minute. Have okay. Um, oh, my. Reading? Okay, here we go. Hey, why don't I start? That way you can be the last one to say. Oh, come on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Um, welcome to Wednesday. <laughs> wow, this place is awesome. I thought I'd play straight. <laughs> I'm sure some kid is spriced in that. <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Top uh, your next. Would you like a raspberry ripple? Mm, would you like a muffin? Are you doing <laughs> gum? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why in the world would I do that? Uh, okay, now I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was close to a minute with our stumbling around. But... So we'll say the answer to that question is maybe. <laughs> yes, exactly. definitely maybe. Even though Austin stopped it since Tasha last quoted Cody from uh, from the pushover about being lost. So oh, I stopped in Austin's court then. <laughs> Well, we thought of the would you like a muffin one because that's like one of the most recognizable phrases or quotes. I recognized it. Yes, I know. I'm, if you guys did not be worried. All right. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> what careers are you guys hoping for when you're older? What do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. Episode title right there. A oh, sort of. Like, what do you want to be when you do ever? No, what are you gonna do with your life? That's what. Yes, called. that's how I should have worded it. Okay, so who's supposed to go first? Um, Toss, uh, Austin. Tostin. Uh, Tostin. <laughs> like, Tostin. Not as, like, Tash, Tashlan. <laughs> Tostin. Or Asha. Or okay, just quit. Just quit right there. <laughs> okay. Austin, go first. Okay. Um, well, I'm... I was supposed to start college this fall, but it looks like it won't be started until spring. But I'm going to be going into communication media, which covers a, a large range of subjects from journalism to um, some arts. Um, and eventually, um, what I really want to do is sound design. Like for, um, of course, I'm I'd love to work in Odyssey, but I love sound design. Doing podcasting really shows me how much I have a knack for it. And how much fun I have with it, even though some people think it's really boring. But I really enjoy that kind of thing. It's really neat how you can piece all these things together and do with so many things, so many sounds, so many voices. I, I'd like to do that for a career like freelancing or, like I said, I would like to sound, do sound design for Odyssey. And I, I really would like that as a career, but I could still easily do some a lot of other stuff with the uh, Degree I'm gonna try to get, but that's I want I want to be a sound designer, so so that sums it up pretty pretty good. So, Tasha, um, I'm really leaning towards um, elementary education. I love working with kids, and I said that that's where God wants me to go. So, thinking of education and also music, right? Maybe. Yeah, Tasha is a really good violinist. She's a really good musician. 
So this next question, I was going to say you might not be expecting, but you've kind of seen the questions. <laughs> so <laughs> will we ever see a return of the blog, blog blah, blah, cast? <laughs> Oh. I can't talk. <laughs> Neither can I. You want to try that again or just keep keep it in? We're just keeping. Go yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, who, who should a answer this? Because whatever Doesn't matter. Tasha says may not be. Uh, All right. It won't you can answer it then. Okay. It's up to you. I could say still be yes or yes or no, and then go on the next question. But yes, I no, or maybe. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. But well, the reason we stopped the podcast because one I want to stop overhead I don't I really don't like it when podcasts start and they just stop with really no explanation or um, really any excuse or reason to end it especially um, if they've got a large fan base or just starting out and they're getting pretty popular um, I, I didn't want it to happen like that I and mean, we had so much fun with the podcast we when I t first talked about it, I was like, no, no, I don't want that to happen. And we had a lot of discussions about <laughs> ending it or not, but we finally all agreed that since, one, we're getting older, we've been doing it for over three years, um, about three, over three years, a little over three years now, um, we've, we've got a pretty good amount of episodes under our belt. I know Tasha's gonna have this really weird little picture because she always cracks me up I say it's it's a metaphor, okay? Um, but even though we had a really good time, we did we would like it to continue, but I didn't want to just like do an episode whenever we could, which was sort of what we were doing near the end. I still like to have some kind of schedule, even though it wasn't definite. I still liked like having the different seasons, like having some specific times when we weren't doing it and when we were doing it. And, well, we just thought it's better to end now than to just let it go on, just fade away, and just die. So, we thought it'd be really, it'd be neat. Now, I was thinking about this for a while. Actually, we want, we had thought about ending it quite a bit um, before um, we actually did in season six. We actually planned for, um, for it to end in, on season five. And um, to have a last episode that August, um, so that, because I thought I'd be getting a job later on, I thought it would interfere with um, what I what I could do with the podcast. But it turned out um, I didn't get a job at that that time. Um, so I thought I can keep I, we can keep doing this for a while. We, did, we didn't announce it until we knew that we were going to do it, which we did in the beginning of season six. So it was an, it was also a big excuse. It was a excuse to have a really big send off episode, like a big se series finale, which if you, I'm I'm not sure how many people listen to that almost four hour long podcast. I did. I did. <laughs> I can't listen. Yeah, to good job. I, I applaud anybody who's listened to, to that. I couldn't. I'd have to listen to it. Like I listened to parts of it. <laughs> I think I was I was oh, Victoria, getting ready yeah. for like finals and stuff around the time it came out and so I couldn't listen to the There's whole thing. no excuse for you. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed though something. I noticed that you put the facility oh, yes. thing in it. <laughs> I, I, I had kept it out of the blooper reel for sibling spies because um it was already getting too long with that and there were so many outtakes with that I didn't I, I think it's still hilarious, and I think in one of your pod, podcasts you did a, a similar word. I think. Yeah, Victoria, sure I didn't even it. realize. Yeah. This. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I want to say it. Okay. Um, on episode two of the Oddcast, when we're talking about Odyssey characters and descriptions of them, in one of them Tom. I said, in Tom's I said, facility. Yeah, I, was I thought of it right away. I laughed out loud when I heard it. I didn't notice. Yeah, until and Devin she said didn't something. notice. And then, like, uh, a couple descriptions later, I looked at him. I'm like, You realize what just happened, right? And he's like, What? I'm like, I just said facility. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's and then not what happened. <laughs> You're like, You realize you put facility in my lines, right? I was like, I did. And I scrolled up. I was like, Huh. And she said it fine, wow. so I never noticed. Well, yeah, I, I can say now. Practice for it. Yeah. Now yeah. we just have to re record Sibling Spies. <laughs> Or at least my lines. <laughs> so what was your one-word answer to that question? 
Yes, okay, I, I haven't, I haven't, fi I haven't finished it yet. Um, oh. Well, we, up when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but um, I didn't want to end completely. Like what we've been doing, like with we did an Odyssey date night on SoundCloud. I'm planning on doing some few little um, creative projects on that, and of course with YouTube, like some interviews and some other video stuff. That we sort of we wanted to do video podcasts, but we never really had the time or ability to do it. So it's sort of a way around it actually doing some of those things we wanted to do in a video podcast. And um, we are in the very beginning stages of another radio drama. I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't... You just did. <laughs> I just... I, I, we have... A, I think it's, if it turns out, if I can get all the dialogue and everything, I think it's going to be a super awesome story. I hope I'm not bragging too much there, but it's... It's a really complex, more complex than anything that we have ever done. If it comes out, I'm trying to get work on the script for it, and if I can get the majority of it, and I can the people I want to be, and if I can get at least some of those in there, then I will announce it, and I will try to get it out sometime next year. But are we until, gonna until, be in it? What? Devin, be quiet. Are we gonna be in it? <laughs> we don't ask for <laughs> <laughs> well, he can because I have to answer him because you know this is live unless he edits it. Um, yeah, you heard it here, first, folks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have some ideas, some characters that you guys could play, but it's until it actually comes out on paper or actually just the screen. I don't. That'd be hard writing a whole script on paper, but um, that may happen, but. The blogcast itself will continue in sort of separate things as long as we're able to do that. We may, it'd be sort of nice to have like a reunion special at some point in the future, maybe when like 10 years from now, like when we're all married and have kids and all that, we have this big reunion with um, like me and Tasha or some, some of our friends, like you guys, some yeah. friends and Kathy, and maybe some other people and just like, sort of like do a big episode like we did for episode 45. But that, that's nothing definite, that this is an idea, and that probably won't come to fruition until, I don't know how long, but in until a way... Until you that, actually do have kids. <laughs> yeah. But, that's why he has this long white beard. <laughs> <laughs> but the broadcast lives on in some ways, just not as an entire thing, but it still lives on. It still lives on, but it may not be a full broadcast for some time. All right, that question took like ten minutes, so <laughs> this is going to be our our lightning round now because we're running out of time. So these questions you have to answer in ten seconds or less. Okay. Oh if Austin, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. If Austin was trapped in a room with Emily Jones for thirty six hours, seventeen minutes, and fifty two seconds, I have no idea why that's so precise. With no way out, what would he do to pass the time? Um, look. Look for Lester, but no, I would debate her for quite a while and then try try to drink, um, tune her out so I wouldn't have to hear her talk. I seriously answer. thought you were going to say listen to Odyssey episodes that don't have her in them. Has yeah, Tasha, if you're an actual person, then that would work. Has Tasha ever heard of the Kingdom Heirs? Yes, I have. And I really like them. Me, me too. We actually listened to one of their CDs today and I would like them. If Tasha had to choose between Legacy 5 or Ernie Haas, who would it be? Ernie Haas. Sorry, that, that you, is a hard name. <laughs> okay. She would know what it is. Um, Tasha. I, have, I definitely have to say like five. I would have to, if it was directed at me, it would be Ernie Hustle. You're sound there way better. And it wasn't directed at you, so don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tasha, what do you think about Emily Jones? My fingers are up here. Okay, without Austin corrupting you, and what was your first impression of her? I think she may be a little bossy, but she's not all that bad. And the first time I heard her, I thought she was just another kid character, so I didn't really care about it. That's a good unbiased answer. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, I didn't or, taught her to say that. <laughs> do you have or have you ever had a crush on an Odyssey character? You don't have to answer mm -hmm. that if you don't want to. Who, me or Austin or both? <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> myself ever doing that, but I know Tasha has a story. Um, a lot of people would say they had, a lot of girls, excuse me, would say that they had crushes on Jimmy Barkley. That's not the case with me. It would be uh, 
Jared Dwight. It's a fair answer. For me, it might have been Richard Maxwell, honestly. <laughs> or Buck. It wasn't for me. Buck from Green Ring Conspiracy. He's adorable. Okay. Have you made your bed yet today, this morning? It's made, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> All right. You're asking her. And finally, question for Tasha. What is your favorite book series? Ooh, anything that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anything more specific? Uh, I can. Chronicles of Narnia, The Sugar Free Gang, and Hardy Boys. Thank you, Tasha. Okay, Austin. <laughs> why do you like grown-up males playing younger boys more than grown-up females playing younger girls? Because a lot, a lot of women, they try to make their voice sound really high pitched sometimes, and it sounds really. Depending on who it is, it does, it doesn't, they doesn't, they don't really sound younger. They sound older, just in a weird way. But some males, they, they can, like, um, like Adam Wiley, can do it real good. Out. But I, I think guys can do it because their voices can, can be just uh, a little higher a little bit and not sound as different than like their adult voices. What I could explain a little more, but you know, Tasha keeps telling me about this time limit. What positive emotions, the things, do you actually like about Emily Jones? Uh, I'll be able to ask you, Tasha, because I have nothing to say. <laughs> I have one thing about her that I like, her design. She is a pretty good design. In the character illustration? Yeah. All right, what do you like? I guess that's the only thing I could think of good about, good about her. Okay. I think I already know the answer to this question for you. Which is better, Apple or Windows? Windows. Yeah, Tasha. I knew you'd say that. Cough, well, cough, if you, heathen. If you, <laughs> if you were asking if it was Android versus iOS, I would say Android. Windows isn't a good for a phone operating system, but Android is better for mobile and Windows is better for um, computers. Okay. And I really have no idea, so... Okay, both of you, what is the worst thing that Odyssey has ever done? You can't say Emily Jones. <laughs> uh, brought Mitch back. Even though Which I like time? the episode. No, the second time. But I, I really like the episode. It's a great funny episode, but I don't like how they brought it back. And I also have a, a bias against it because I was spoiled about it the night before I heard it. Mm -hmm. Tasha? This may or may not count for an answer, but I don't like how they check out the um, uh, physical address at the end of the show. Oh yeah, I've like been that. meaning to post. A, I've meaning to post about the town of Vox. We got. Have you guys noticed the radio versions? Only Chris at, at the end of the after the music stops, and she said like you can contact us online, but she doesn't say the address anymore. I. Well, I think that's because we all know where it is. Well, yeah, but it's something <laughs> they listen to on every that. episode, and even though I don't think a lot of people. Right. Excuse me. Send physical letters anymore. That's still part, a big part of our memory of AIO. Yeah. Now that I'm living in Vancouver, I'm planning on tracking down the actual physical PO box 9800 V6B 4G3. 4G. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and let's see if the Canadian Postal Service is smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> well, I think there is a focus on the family of Canada. But I'm not, it may be at that address. I don't know, maybe just a, it says P.O. box. I guess yeah, it's, it's only a mailbox. I have to try and figure out which mail station it is. I don't take yeah, a picture of myself. You'll, stink out, you'll hang outside the post office and see who comes in put and a, out. I'll mail something and put a tracking device in the envelope <laughs> and then follow it around town. Okay, so what do you guys think of VeggieTales really quick? Um, they have some pretty good humor, even though it's mostly for kids. I really like the humor and the songs are hilarious. I'd have to agree. The songs are awesome. Okay. Especially the one about if uh, my lips ever left my mouth, <laughs> too bad I can have it stop. And no, we're not, we're not we're starting. We're not singing, and not singing. I'm not starting that. Final question. Who is your least favorite character pre-Album 50 hiatus? Um, Tasha go first. I've tried to think here. <laughs> it used to be Dr. Regis Flackard. I hated his laugh, but I don't know who it would be now. Hmm... I never liked Glenn very much. I think he's pretty good. Danny Schmidt. I like Glenn. I like Glenn now I like Glenn. more than I'm Danny older. Danny Schmidt was good for what he was supposed to do. I guess maybe sort I didn't... I can't... Emily Jones, yeah, I didn't like it that much. And some of the voice changes for some characters I don't like that much. 
But I would say I can't really have a least favorite besides Emily because you know uh, I, said I know post hiatus, second hiatus. But I'll probably say Nicholas Adamsworth. I don't know if he was a good character he was, but his what happened to him? annoying, annoying, especially in the last episode he was in. I didn't like how he, he turned out to be a bad guy like that. I just never really cared much about his character. I didn't really like A Prisoner for Christ. I wish they could have used another kid character. Yeah. And Tasha? She just said, she said black yeah. earth. No, but that's an unacceptable answer. Yeah, we don't like that answer. You have to. <laughs> yeah, you have to change I it. I like him now, but I used to hate it. He would turn the volume up really loud every time I get to his laugh. Yeah, I would do that with that. It would scoop me up so bad. So it was just Austin it. you did. I would, I, would do, I, would do, I would do that with Allison's roar from Radio Theater because, you know, it's so big. I would always turn it up and scare my sister out of the room. It was so much fun. And he said he was a good kid growing up. <laughs> All right, so who else? Just pick one other child, oh like Danny Schmidt. Because he's really annoying. Yeah, I don't really oh, like him. Oh, God. He's dead. He could, uh, well, um, Seth Young. I know a lot of people okay, don't like I him. I don't like him, though. I, I think he's a pretty he good character. He gets on my nerves. Okay. Right. So, thank you for this interesting experience of us getting to interview you because it was awesome and strange at the same time. Yeah, we didn't have really any uh, dropouts in the call, which is really strange. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very good. It went well, which is good. Yeah. Well, I guess, depending on your... Um, good is a relative term. Some, some of the questions I couldn't answer too much about Emily, I guess that was sort of planned ahead so I wouldn't rant too much, but I can con <laughs> usually control myself. If someone actually asked me, I think the longest rant I've done... We interviewed uh, Dan Klein or Odyssey Family on our podcast. Like, he asked me specifically why I didn't like her. I've written stuff, stuff online, but it's been shorter stuff because I can. it's easier to talk. So I talked for about 30 seconds to a minute about why I didn't like her, but I won't do that now, and I'm keeping on the universe with the end of this, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So thank you once again for joining us, and we'll talk to you soon. And for our Oddcast watchers, we will turn you back over to Devin and Victoria. Bye, guys. Say bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, we're back. Thank you for staying with us for the interview, or if you just skipped ahead in the table of contents. Shame then, on you. Yeah. Why what, did you do that? What's the point in watching the wrap-up if you're not going to watch the content? That's just kind of boring. Yeah. So, uh, not much to say at the end here. Next week we're going to be reviewing the next two episodes, which have now come out for you guys, No Chemistry Whatsoever and The Friend Formula. I listened to them, and for those of you who know my opinions about Jace Mouse, you will probably know what I think of the Fred formula in advance. It's, it's, it's positive, very positive. Yes, positive. And I unfortunately haven't listened to either of them yet. I know, it's crazy because, I, you know, I've been moving and stuff, so it's kind of crazy. Don't moving, say that. Moving out. It means it's true. Yeah. So, thank you to Austin and Tasha for letting us interview them. It was fun, guys. Yes, even though we had Yay. to get everything pinched into a hurry at the end, we had a good time, and hopefully everyone will feel enlightened by the experience. I did. But we're looking forward to the next interview, which we will be having with whomever it may be, be it audition or cast member or crew member. We're very excited about whoever may come next far down the schedule. But we don't know who they are. Yes. But God knows. Yes. So. <laughs> so, like Victoria said before, right after this episode is released, we're going to be having another episode, which isn't really going to feature us very much. Actually, I'll probably yeah. toss a wrap around onto the beginning and end. Oh, I don't know if it'll just be him doing the wrap around, or I'll be there too. Probably because it's it's I'll, not a very complicated. I might thing. be there. I don't know. It's really the content that's the focus of it. So, like I say, when I say next week, yeah, it, that's skipping over this thing because it's kind of getting shoehorned in to catch our schedule up to back where it was originally planned to be. So, I think that's all we have to say. Do you have anything else, Victoria? No. <laughs> all right. So, thank you for joining us on our side of the YouTube. This has been Devin. And this is Victoria. And you have been watching The, the Adventures, Adventures in Odyssey, Odyssey Podcast. Podcast.
was going to say. Blogcast. I was going to say episode, oddcast. I'm like, oh wait, cross, it's the blogcast. No, it's not. Blogcast episode crossed over with the oddcast. I saved it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you for watching the oddcast. The odd blogcast. Whatever, whatever it's, it's called. called. Thank okay. you and good night, Gracie. Good night. Okay, so, scribble to the tricky note. Okay. Okay, go. Okay, you do it. I was like, why are you moving over on the webcam? But I forgot his back. And we're okay. back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I really wanted to do that.